Hello everyone. Today I am going to discuss the last problem of lit code weekly contest 433, which is maximum and minimum sums of at most k size subarrays. So, so the problem statement is quite uh, straightforward from its name itself. So, uh, we are given an integer array nums and a positive integer k. We have to return the sum of the maximum and minimum elements of all subarrays with at most k elements. So, let's take the first example: uh, nums one, two, three, and k equals to two. Okay. So, we have the array nums one, two, three, and our k equals to two. So one thing to consider here is that the elements could be negative also. Okay. Mm. Now, uh, what are the subarrays of size uh, less than equals to two? So the subarrays size less than equals to two are one, two, three, one length subarrays, uh, one, two, uh, two, three. These are two length subarrays. So what is the maximum and minimum element of this uh, of this subarray? This will be one and one. Now uh, for this it is two two. For this this is three three. And for this survey, it is 1, 2, and for this survey, this is 2, 3. Okay, so the sum is here, uh, it is coming out as 2, 4, 6, uh, 3, and 5. So, yeah, 8, 14, 18, 20. So, the answer is 20. So, I hope you get it. Uh, that's why the answer is uh, 20. Okay, now how we are going to solve this problem? So uh, the basic straightforward approach will be to iterate over all the surveys and take the maximum and minimum sum uh, of that array. The uh, time complexity for that uh, solution, like iterating over each and every survey and calculate the maximum and minimum of the survey and take the sum, that uh, time complexity will be order of n into k. So let's check out the uh, constants to find out if the, the solution will work or not. So here. Uh, n is 80, 84 and similarly k is also 84 so overall if we compute order of uh, n k it will be around 1.6 e9 which is impossible to uh, calculate in the given time frame okay so how you are going to solve this problem so let's come uh, come to the observation part okay so what is the observation we can make the observation we can make is that uh, that we can solve the problem separately for maximum and minimum okay so uh, solve it separately for max and min solve it separately for max and min now uh, another thing i want to mention here only that if we solve the problem for maximum the same uh, <coughs> solution can be applied for minimum also let's say we have uh, some function a which is uh, solving the problem for our uh, maximum now if we change every element uh, of the given array so let's say a is taking our array as input so f of a now if we change the array such that a bar is uh, like if ai will be minus ai so a bar is nothing but minus ai okay so if we change the uh, <coughs> uh, array to a bar which is uh, every element is changed to minus ai then uh, f of a bar will give us the sum of all minimum elements so that that's how we are going to solve this problem minus f a bar will give us the sum of all minimum elements okay so you have to take the sum of f a and minus f a bar okay so that is the second observation you can say now uh, how we are going to solve this problem for only maximum or only minimum so let's uh, consider that uh, okay so uh, for a moment let's uh, forget about forget about k okay so let's say we have to find out the number of uh, subarrays uh, number of subarrays per, uh, with maximum minimum sum of maximum minimum of all the subarrays irrespective of k okay so how we are going to solve this so this problem is quite straightforward what we have to do is that we have to uh, find for a given element for a given element what is the left side uh, that this element is max and what is the rightmost element uh, such that from a to r if we take every subarray containing this element ith element this uh, element is the maximum element okay so let's uh, let's take one example let's say 1 2 3 2 1 okay 1 2 3 2 1 let's say there is 4 here and there is 5 here so if you, you can check that if we can take l as this and r as this and if we take any subarray containing this third element that this element is becoming maximum so we have to for every element we have to find this value of l and r okay after finding the value of l and r we are now not considering the value of k okay so after we find out the value of l and r what will be the total number of subarrays where this element is the maximum element so the number of subarrays where this element is the maximum element is nothing but i minus l into r minus i okay this will be nothing but i minus l into r minus i okay i think plus one will be added here but the concept is like this only that uh, let's say we take any index from this part or and uh, as l and if we take any index from this part as r so that's why it will be i minus l 
plus one i think uh, into r minus i plus one okay so that is the concept but here uh, one problem is that we have uh, uh, as a constant k okay we have as a constant k so how we are going to solve uh, this problem for uh, with k so let's say there are uh, let's say there are a elements here in, in the left side and there are b elements in the right side okay now we have to take this this element so our uh, what is our function okay so we have to take there are a is 2 here 1 and 2 and b is also 2 here so we have to find out something like a plus b okay a plus b which is less than uh, k okay that is the solution we have to find out so let me uh, let me take one moment so um, what I am saying is that uh, we have to find out uh, some solution is that a plus b is less than k. Okay. So uh, this is not exactly a plus b is less than k means that there are uh, a elements here and b elements here. So we can say that x plus y is less than k. Okay. x plus y is less than k and x is less than a x is less than equals to a because we can take only a elements and y is less than equals to b we have to find the number of solutions as that x plus y is less than k where x less than equals to a and y less than equals to b i hope you got the equation now uh what how we are going to solve this problem is that we are going to solve this problem in a reverse way okay so we, we will find the total solution of uh x plus y okay we have to, we will find the total solutions of x plus y is equals to k okay and after that let me check the code uh, about one thing so we are going to uh, this is the function that is uh, that will solve the problem for us so uh, what is this let me take one moment okay um, now let's jump into the solution so we have to find such that x plus y is less than k okay uh, or we can say less than equals to k minus 1 we can write that now uh, we know that uh, the trivial problem is that let's say we have something like x1 plus uh, x2 plus dot 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 uh, x if plus xr equals to equals to n okay then uh, the total number of solution for this equation uh, is uh, n plus r minus 1 c r minus 1 okay this is a uh, stars and bars problem you can search stars and bars problem and bars now for our problem this is not exactly equality we have something like uh, uh, let, let me switch to here so we have something like x1 plus x2 is uh, less than equals to something n okay so we have to solve this problem inequality so for that we can add something x3 also okay so we can add something x3 okay so we have to add x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals to n we can change this inequality to equality so whatever uh, x1 plus x2 is missing from n so n minus x1 minus x2 will be nothing but our x3 okay so we have to solve this problem for x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals to n now uh, we uh, we can modify this problem where we can add uh, x1 less than equals to a or x2 less than equals to b also but that in that case a and b should be less than n but here in our case our a could be greater than n or b could be greater than n or both could be greater than n so we can't really use uh, the trick where x1 less than equals to n x2 less than equals to b so we have to solve this problem separately okay so we'll use uh, some uh, inclusion exclusion principle so we will solve this problem first where x1 plus x2 is less than equals to n without considering a and b okay so what will be our solution for x1 plus x2 less than equals to n so we have to solve this uh, problem first so what is the solution for this here r equals to 2 okay r equals to 3 so our solution will be n plus 3 minus 1 c 3 minus 1 so our solution will be n plus 2 c 2 okay so n plus 2 c 2 will be our total solution now here comes an interesting case that a could be greater than n and b could be greater than n also okay in that case we have to handle that separately okay so let's come into the code so total solution is nothing but n plus 1 c2 uh, sorry n plus 2 c2 so n plus 2 into n plus 1 by 2 and uh, now uh, we have to find that uh, what is the solution when x is greater than a okay so we have to find x is greater than a okay so if x is greater than a uh, let me take one moment to uh, visualize everything so uh, this is quite straightforward where x is greater than equals to a so uh, 
what we can do is that instead of taking x as variable we can take x bar minus a as variable so x bar a equals to x minus a as variable okay so if we take x minus a as variable then uh, we have to subtract a from here so our uh, x, uh, equation will become x1 bar plus x2 plus x3 is equals to uh, what is equals to n minus a because we are subtracting a from here left side or uh, a from here right side so our solution will now become n minus a plus 2 c2 okay n minus a plus 2 c2 so uh, n minus a uh, sorry i think i am missing something so uh, we are taking x is greater than equals to a right if uh, we are taking x is greater than equals to a so uh, we have to take x minus a minus 1 from here so that's why it will become n minus a minus 1 now n minus a minus 1 plus 2 c2 so it will become n minus a plus 1 uh, c2 okay so it will be n minus a plus 1 c2 similarly for y greater than b we are calculating this it will be n minus b plus 1 c2 i hope you get it now for inclusion and exclusion principle so let's say we have something like uh, uh, a union b is nothing but uh, a plus b minus a intersection b right so we have to take the in intersection of these things also where x is greater than a and uh, x is greater than equals to a and y is greater than equals to b in that case it will become n minus a minus b uh, minus 1 c2 so we have to take uh, out a, a minus 1 from here so it will be n minus a minus 1 now we have to take out minus b minus 1 from here okay so it will be n minus a minus b minus 2 uh, minus 2 now we have to take this this will be our new n so we have to take n plus uh, 2 c2 so that's why our formula will become n minus a minus b c2 okay now after that we have to apply the total solution it will be total solution minus x is greater than a minus y is greater than b now we have to add the sub, uh, uh, intersection of these two things both are greater than n okay uh, uh, i hope you get it now uh, at the end we are returning our answer now this part where we are finding the value of left and right so uh, let's come to the first part where i am explaining that we have to find uh, for this three we have to find what is the value of uh, value in the left side and what is the value in the right side so what what is the what is the maximum uh, index we can take at left and what is the maximum index we can take at right okay that's what this is also a common problem okay so, uh, i will not going to explain this part i will uh, provide some article uh, uh, gfg article for this where we find uh, what is the left and what is the right okay but let me go through this once again uh, such that you you could understand okay uh, so let's say we have some array like one two three four five so i will only explain how we are going to find the right side of that okay so uh, we'll maintain one stack okay we'll maintain one stack so let's say our stack is empty we'll add one to the stack okay now uh, whenever we are encountering two okay so we'll check if the last element in the stack is less than the current element okay the last element from the stack is less than current element so right of this so right most greater element uh, so the uh, closest greater element at the right side of this one will be two okay so we can say that right let's say let's say we are maintaining the right array so right of this one will be two okay now similarly uh, we'll pop this element from the stack and we'll uh, push two in the stack so when we will find three We'll check if the last uh, the uh, top element of the stack is less than this. Yes, the top element from the stack is uh, mm, less than this element. So right of this two will be three. Okay, like that we'll maintain the right array. Okay, uh, I hope you get it. Now another uh, important thing is here is that uh, let's say we have some equal elements. Okay, let's say we have all uh, three, 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 three. All are threes. Okay. Now eventually these three will be uh this three will what will be the uh left and right of this three so we can consider that the left of this three is this element and the right of this three is this element this is one consideration or we can take uh, the different consideration also okay so our at the first consideration for this three our l value is this and r value is this this is one consideration or another consideration could be the left value for this three is three this one and the right value for this three is this one so okay we have to take one consideration we can't really take that uh, left of this three is this and right of this three is this the, the algorithm will be quite difficult for that then okay so that's why uh, here you can check that we are maintaining less than equals to in one case uh, 
uh, while, while building the right side and we are uh, using less than uh, while building the left side so you can reverse this also you can take less than here and less than equals to the here. the on, uh, uh, the answer will be same okay so after that uh, what we are doing we are iterating uh, over every element and we are checking what is the number of elements we can take at the left side which is i minus left i minus one and what are the number of elements we can take on the right side that will be r, right i minus i minus one and after that we will take that what are the sub arrays what are the sub arrays where this element is the maximum element that that's where our count function will come into play okay that will take uh, parameters uh, a b and n and will, it will give us our desired answer so our equation is nothing but uh, x plus uh, x plus y is less than equals to k minus 1 that's why uh, um, we are cons uh, asking for l comma r comma k minus 1 okay i hope you get it now we'll solve the problem for nums that will give us the sum of all the maximum elements uh, corresponding to the all the uh, uh, constants we have okay for k and again we will transfer this this array transform this array from num i to num uh, bar where every element is a negative and if we take uh, the same sum of maximum this will give us the sum of minimum this time okay i have already explained this earlier so our answer will be answer minus solve of nums comma k okay I hope you got, got, uh, got the explanation. The overall time complexity is order of n. Uh, okay. Uh, if you find this video helpful, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you have any doubt in any part of the explanation or code, you can always ask in the comment section. I will provide the link of the code in the description box. You can check that out. Uh, also, I might be sketchy because I am recording video after a long time. Uh, so, please uh, forgive me for that. I will try to improve in the latter videos. Thank you.